There's a train coming right now at 80 miles an hour, and if I don't escape... This is Arak, and that was a VFX shot. You're gonna learn how to do this, this, and even do this. Welcome to How to Edit Like Arak. Open Premiere Pro, or whatever editing software you edit on if you don't have Premiere, and create a text layer using Ctrl T on your keyboard. Make sure to extend your text layer so you have room to keyframe, and now you can type whatever you want in the text box. Hold Ctrl and drag your text to center it in the middle of the screen. I couldn't identify the font that Eric uses, so we'll have to settle on impact font for now. Change the fill color to be somewhere in the yellow, and then change the stroke color to be black. If you're adding this text exactly how I am, then your screen is probably black as well, so you can't see the stroke color. To fix this, just add any footage you have or a white image to blind yourself, and then increase the stroke to about 11. This text isn't looking bad so far, however, it's missing the main ingredient to making Arax text great. Grab the VR glow effect or any glow effect you have if you're on another software, and change the tint color to be the same as your text. The final step is to increase the glow until it's somewhere here, and the text is pretty much finished. But there still is more to do though. Premiere users will need the transform effect to animate the text, so that way we can add motion blur, making it much smoother. Everyone else though, you could just head straight to the keyframing tab. Add a keyframe for position and scale, move forward 30 frames, and then set the scale to 200. Now there's a growing animation on your text, but it looks too stiff, so to fix it, hover over the last two keyframes and choose ease in, and then on the first two, choose ease out. If you go over to scale and click this little down arrow, you'll see a graph showing the animation speed up and then slow down. While you're in here, drag the last line as far as you can towards the first, and then this will make your text be faster in the beginning and then have a much longer slowdown. The cherry on top is disabling this checkbox, increasing your shutter angle to 360, and now you have a really smooth text animation like Arac that you can save by right clicking transform and saving the preset. Arac's editor does love to do a lot of text tracking, sparingly of course, but that's for another video. Next guy's name is Arson. I hope Arson doesn't commit arson. What you just saw was an explosion effect because I was blown away when I first saw some of the explosion effects in Eric's videos. So here's how you make it without exploding your computer. Put the clip into your software that you would like the explosion to be in. For my example, I'm just going to take this image of a neighborhood. What will sell this effect is rotoscoping. You can either create a custom mask in your editing software or use Runway ML to automatically get rid of the background around the house for you. If you don't know what Runway is, it's a free and paid software that has various AI tools that can speed up your editing like crazy. Not sponsored by the way. Okay, once you have your layer with the background removed, download a green screen explosion from a source like YouTube and then place all your layers in your software in this order. Mask out layer, green screen, and the original layer. Now if you use your position tool, you can move your explosion around into a spot that looks right. For flexibility, use basic 3D or any 3D effect you have to make the perspective of the explosion better blend in with the shot. If you have a still shot, you are nearly done, but let's say you have a moving shot. You're gonna have to keyframe the explosion to stay in the same position throughout the full duration of your clip. I believe it's better to have a still shot frame because if you combine all these layers into one like so, you can add things like a fake camera movement and even zoom in without completely messing up the position of the green screen, which really helps give it realism. And speaking of things that look cool with realism, is this really subtle but visually pleasing highlighting effect. And it's really quite simple. Take a green layer over the object you wish to highlight, turn the opacity to about 50% so you can see. Then create a mask out of the green surrounding what your target is. It's probably best to turn the softness up a tiny bit so the mask isn't as pointy looking. Head over to your keyframe tab, turn the opacity to zero, go forward a couple frames, turn the opacity up to around 50 to 70%, move forward a couple more frames, and then change the opacity back down to zero. Now the object gets a quick little glow that looks really cool. For those extremists who want even more, add multiple keyframes changing the opacity up and down to get a more flashy highlight. But what's not flashy is watching YouTube videos at 0.25x speed. I doubt you have ever analyzed an ARAC video, but what you probably have never realized is how much ARAC zooms in on every single shot. And to do that, it's really simple. Set a position and scale keyframe, move forward some more frames on your shot, and then either zoom in or zoom out. Make sure to keep the zoom subtle, otherwise it can become quite hard to watch, and what's also hard to watch is a video that isn't edited well. So if you want to learn how to edit like one of your favorite YouTubers, watch this video next.